So today I want to talk to you about famous books that I haven't read. And it's very interesting because the following book, The Children of Blood and Bone, was literally the book that had me quitting YA. It was one of the many books actually that along a journey of one year had me actually finally quit young adult. I don't really read much young adult nowadays and the reason why is really because they are highly predictable. I remember reading Children of Blood and Bone and it was the most predictable cliched YA book I have read in a long while and I'm not really saying that hyperbolically I actually mean it because I had read so much of so many of these stories there is the empire or the you know the people with power they are oppressive they use the power cartoonishly okay cartoonishly in order to oppress the protagonist or the people or to imprison them and now the protagonist has to go and overthrow them and take them out it's a it really there's not much to it a lot of young adult stories are like this. It is mostly really trying also to explore the same thematic concepts that have been done to death. I mean, teenagers face multitudes of challenges. There are few that are ever really discussed in YA. And one of those is actually the idea of, you know, accepting yourself or finding yourself or you being different is okay. That's beautiful, it's an amazing message to have. We cannot have that message enough. Moreover, teenagers have a lot of other problems, do they not? How about depression? How about anxiety? How about fears of, I don't know, like adulthood? <laughs> How about, you know, they, they, they're really not confident in what to do. They might know who they are, but they are not confident in what to do, how to live life, what is life, what am I doing here, what's this? Why, what's with society, the relationship with society, societal norms, etc. So those are many, many themes and struggles that teenagers go through. <laughs> Young adult just fails to explore much of that. And so the children of blood and bone, I basically quit. I think it was five chapters into the story. It was about eight months ago. <laughs> yes, I essentially just stopped reading it. And this the reason why is because I, I just I felt like I read the story before I felt like I could know everything It was basically the same thing with a coat of you know um, Black characters, so yeah, it's nothing really different now This book seems like exactly what I need. It seems like exactly what I want Taigana, right? It is a brilliant story that has a lot of promise with politics. I love this stuff. I haven't read it. I have read the synopsis and it, it just has a lot of potential for exploring a lot of deeper topics. And everyone in Reddit talks about this story relentlessly. Two back to back to back every single post about hey can you recommend me a book it has an amazing word of mouth it's a classic i'm assuming by this point because of the number of people i've seen talk about it but i have never really managed to get to read it it has been on my tpr list for a year and a half now the reason why I, and it's very simple the reason why is because every time i try to read it i have something come up i have maybe an exam or maybe someone recommended I read another book and I'm reading that book. Maybe I have another project or an internship. In the summer, I had an internship. I, I simply never ever managed to get to this book. You are going to relate when I say reading slump through other things keeping you busy is a big sad wedge because you feel like, ah, I want to read, but I can't read now. I don't have much of a willpower and if, it, you just you, you just become you become sadder and sadder and sadder. So Taigan is actually another story that very very sad reality. I want to read it. I have it in my TPR. I've had it for more than a half a year now. Uh, sorry, a year and a half. But hopefully I will get to it in the future. Hopefully, hopefully. Now the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. I had no clue what this story was, but I've always just looked at it as one of those ancient, ancient stories that no one really reads. Um, actually, yeah, a lot of people read it. Um, it's recommended in schools, in universities, people analyze it, there's an entire subculture, there's a whole fandom to this very day. It's a, it's a proper classic that has maintained some semblance, but I have never read it. I just always like, I, 
there's always a more exciting book. Like I might even read, why, why that when I can read Taigana, right? When I could pick up another book that I've been meaning to pick up for a very long time. Then there is Neil Gaiman. I have never had a luck reading too much of Neil Gaiman. Um, in fact, Good Omens was a book I have been meaning to read for more than a year now. American Gods is two and a half years now. Two and a half years? I think it's been three years in my TPR. It's basically so down my TPR, I wouldn't even get to it. <laughs> yes, I, I, I loved Terry Pratchett, right? Okay, so I absolutely loved reading Terry Pratchett. I absolutely enjoyed reading his stories. And they were good friends. And it seems Neil Gaiman has a similar voice. He's as witty, as funny, and his stories are always unique, wacky, but also like American Gods, serious and amazing in concept and execution and in every way possible. He should be an author that I have read much more about. I just haven't. Yes, his stories have been relentlessly adapted into everywhere. I mean, Sandman, Good Omen, American Gods, he's a monster, he's a celebrity. I haven't read any of his books, however. Yeah, so I will make an effort in the summer to pick up some of his books, read it, enjoy some of those. I will start with American Gods and or, or maybe Good Omen. Good Omen seems much more witty, funny, hilarious, much more of a fun ride. So probably I'll start with Good Omens, okay. So yeah, it's settled. I'll start with Good Omens. I feel that way, so yes. Uh, the title is, is, is also, you know, amazing. Um, so this is another author. These are two books, American Gods and Good Omen, th that are very famous, adapted into, you know, a TV show and, 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 and a movie, I believe, Netflix, something about Netflix. I remember seeing it a while back. So I haven't read these two. Hopefully I will read them in the future. And then another title is actually Cersei. I have not read, read this book. I don't even remember what the synopsis is about. However, I should be reading this book. Everyone like talks about it. It's always, it just it always crops up and I feel like left out of the conversation. Unlike Taigana, it has actually never interested me. I cannot point to why. Um, Achilles is another book. Achilles is another book, classical antiquity. Um, it has never interested me. So I should be reading these books. These are the books that everyone is reading. God damn it. Uh, but first, Neil Gaiman, okay? First, I should read Sandman, I should read American Gods, I should read Good Omen, and then I should watch the TV shows, the adaptations, and it's gonna be like a whole, you know, sprint to see how they adapted different things. Uh, so, um, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was a fun little conversation. Uh, have a nice day. Bye.